Hey guys, I'm Alex. And I'm Drew. And today on the Two Man Comic Book Club podcast, we're taking a look at Eternals number one through number three by Kieran Gillen, Isad Ribic, and Matthew Wilson. Let's go. We back. Yeah. Uh, it's been uh, since the last time. Yeah. Uh, As it normally is. And we've got a fun one for y'all today. It's going to be a good one. Uh, timely, actually, we are covering Eternals on the day of release. Well, technically, they say it's tomorrow, but yeah, there's like four or five showings yeah. tonight at every theater that's showing it. So, uh, yeah, Eternals, super exciting time. Of course, by the time this is released, it will be the Monday after. Sure. So, yeah. have you seen it? If you have, uh, join the Discord. Uh, man, I meant to actually pull up the Discord so I could rattle off the address. Well, while you're doing that, I will say also that you should just go ahead and do all the social media things mm-hmm. and make sure that you're following us. Uh, you can find us at Two Man Comic Book Club with the number two uh, uh, on Instagram, right? We are just Two Man Comic Book. Two Man Comic Book Club. On Twitter, it's Two Man Comic Book. Instagram, Facebook, Two Man Comic Book Club <laughs> with the number two. Yeah, you're the one that needs to do that because yeah. you got it down. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you can find me personally at Alex Wayne Miller. Wayne is W A Y N E, just like Bruce Wayne, because I am Batman, and that is where you will find me uh, flirting with comics creators, uh, just to get their attention. Really, at this point, that's all I'm trying to do. You can find me at Drew Morse Comp on Twitter, Drew Morse Composer elsewhere. Check out my website, DrewMorseMusic.com. Stream my music on places. Tori is with us, running everything behind the scenes right now. Tori, where can they find you? Um, 17942 Ridgeway Drive. <laughs> <laughs> bold, bold move, Cotton, but we'll allow it. Uh, also, if you listen to our podcast, uh, it would be great if you could leave a review, especially on Apple Podcasts. Uh, we have actually had some other ones as well from... Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll pull it up after this. Uh, can we... Yeah, go ahead. Dial it back. I decided the other day, because we've been having issues with Discord, like you click on it when you're in various apps and it doesn't let you take there. So I just wanted to take 15 seconds of everyone's life to rattle yeah. off this address. Oh, let's hear it. All right, please join our Discord at https colon slash slash discord dot gg forward slash lowercase mb capital m lowercase w the number two lowercase mxt capital u lowercase u. We'd love to see you there. <laughs> Uh, tweet at us if you actually went through and re-listened to that uh, several times just to go to that address. And also, we got a Patreon. We'd love it if you supported us. Yeah, we can do more of this, of make it better. Cool tiers. That's patreon.com slash two man comic book club with the number two. Yeah. Also, if you are watching this on YouTube, which we do post these videos on YouTube so you can actually see the panels <laughs> just like this, and I can zoom in on the creator's name. And I can zoom out and swipe around. Super cool. You can actually get a little more in-depth with the panels and check out the art with us as we go through these comic books. Like and subscribe there. Leave a comment. Tell us what you liked. Trying to build up the YouTube side of this podcast as well. Yeah. Uh, Man, social stuff, right? Are you still here? Yeah. (laughs) Did we just scare you off? (laughs) I'm sorry. Um, Before we jump into this comic, we like to do a little bit on here where we talk about what we've been reading over the past week or so since we met. Drew. Actually, we're not done yet. I forgot. Oh. Um, oh. Yeah, so we did have a, four, a five-star review on Podchaser from Robert ah. Stewart. Simply, standout show, exclamation point. I'll take it. Thanks, Robert. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Uh, can I call you Rob? Yeah. Uh, Drew, what you been reading, yo? Okay. Everybody sit down. All right. Uh, grab a drink. Uh, I've read things. Yeah. Uh, I, I forgot to think about this. I forgot we have what you've been reading, you know, even though we've done it 86 <laughs> times. Um, I read All-Star Superman, uh, Grant Morrison. It was an, I, I need to go back and read it again. I also watched the animated movie of it. How right do they afterwards. compare? Uh, I like the comic book more. There's more to it. Uh, they had to cut things for time. I also read Superman Year One, which I didn't like as much. That's just from a couple years ago. It was mm-hmm. a DC Black Label. Um, I read, I finished reading Hawkeye because I had a conversation with DJ the other day and he was like, Hey, have you read Hawkeye? And I was like, Oh, we covered it on the show. Then I forgot it existed. And he was like, well, that's high praise. 
So <laughs> I, uh, I decided to pick up where I left off. And man, I have to say that is now, I don't have a list of my, t- of my favorite comics. You need one. But now I have the beginning, and all, I'm not going to say it's number one, mm-hmm. but I'm going to say it's in my top five. Cool. It's 22 issues. Awesome. Art is amazing. The panel work is amazing. The writing is hilarious. Um, Matt Fraction. Um, yeah. He seems like it's also going to be a pretty uh, heavy yeah. inspiration for the Disney Plus show that's about to come out. So it was a. So I read that. There's more. Oh, I read some indie comics. Um, I want to go more into these later, but I read mm-hmm. Crossbones from Covenant Comics, um, Pilgrim's Dirge, which was a Kickstarter thing I backed, um, and some other things that I, I too many. Um, yeah. But, and then there's something else that I'm forgetting. I, I restarted the Death of Superman arc. So there's that. Oh, and no, I think I mentioned Time Before Time last time. Yeah, uh, I get it. <laughs> so anyway, there's a lot. I'd love to go into more, but... We want to talk Eternals, and I need to ask Alex. Hey, Alex, yes. what you've been reading, yo? I have also read, uh, maybe not quite as much as you, but I, I read some stuff. Um, caught up on all my Iron Man books that I've been reading. I dove back in because I'd started before and didn't finish uh, the original run where Frank Miller took over for Daredevil. Some super cool stuff in there. It's amazing <clears throat> just how different the writing styles can be from that period. Like it can either feel just super dated Mm -hmm. or like it was, uh, the true jumping off point to modern comics. And, uh, this kind of lends towards the latter. Um, also read the first chapter of the Watchmen. I'm actually going through and reading that for the first time. Uh, like the Watchmen, Watchmen, the the original, the original graphic novel. So it's my first time going through to read that. Uh, it's so good. Like a chapter is so good. Uh, super excited about that. I'm gonna try to knock out a chapter a night until it's done. So I don't know how many chapters there are, but I'm really curious. Like a, a week ha, or did so. you say you've read it before? No, I haven't. I want to talk to you about it when you're done. Yeah, we'll have a, comparing the original, the, the the graphic novel version to the movie. Yeah, I've heard the that there's some changes. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know what those what those are, but I'm excited to find out. Also, uh, Drew and I went to the comic book shop just so I could pick up a single comic, and that would be. Human Target Number One by Tom King and Greg Smallwood. Uh, holy crap! This is. I'm trying to think of something else that's different. This might be the single best issue of comic book that I've read all year, and maybe even longer than that. Um, the amount of stuff that goes on in the single issue that made me care about a character that until I heard this was being announced that I did not know existed. Uh, super awesome. I'm making sure that everybody in this room reads this as soon as possible. At this point, it's just like if Tom King wrote a cookbook, I'd read it. Yeah. Um, it's just so good, man. And also Greg Smallwood's art, super awesome. Um, it seems like it seems like Tom tends to work with arts that I don't want to say have a similar style, but they do kind of all work towards his writing as well. I don't know. Maybe that's just the sign of a good artist. Like it just makes sense for the writing, but that story is cool. I can't wait to read more of it. Um, I'm super hyped for it. I'm going to read it again as soon as I can because it's it's that good. I He keeps making me care about characters I didn't know about. Mm-hmm. Um, like, not to be fair, like Mr. Miracle obviously was popular to an extent before Tom King got a hold of the property and did stuff with it. But, I mean, I didn't know who it was. Like, it was just more of the me being more of a Marvel guy than a DC guy, but um, it all just started with Tom King's vision. I was like, man, that was awesome. Uh, I wonder what else he's written. And suddenly, Vision, Mister Miracle, uh, yeah. the Supergirl run, Human Target. I haven't read his Batman. I've heard good things though. Um, there's just lots of cool stuff. Uh, Strange Adventures. I'm caught. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I have one more issue. I think I have to read the last one that I just picked up last week. Um, man, I'm a Tom King fan girl. Yeah. Yeah, but I think that's that's about it for me. Hey, Torrance, have you read anything recently? Um, I've been reading The Dark by Jeremy Robinson. Hmm. It's a real stinker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to stick it out? Yeah. yeah, I'll finish it. Okay. Yeah, maybe it won't stink so bad once you get to the end of it. Nice. Maybe maybe it's one that gets better with age. <laughs> um, cool. Any other cool happenings? Oh, uh, what? This will release when? This Monday? 
Yeah. So I think it's important to talk about the Christmas yeah, thing. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I just thought about that. Go ahead. Uh, so last year we had our first Christmas special where we had a giveaway and we want to do that again. So like find any YouTube video is going to be the easiest way. Yep. Uh, find a YouTube video, you know, preferably one that we have released in the last few months yep. leading up to Christmas. Um, uh, and just give us a comment, uh, subscribe, like all that jazz. Yep. Um, and leave a comment, something about what you liked ha- and add the hashtag two man comic book or two man Christmas 2021. Yep. And then while you're at it, if you're standing next to somebody, take their phone, subscribe to our YouTube, leave a comment. And then if they win it, then you'll just tell them to give it to you. Yeah. That's all acceptable. Uh, at a certain time that will be determined yeah, we soon. A, a cutoff date. We'll, uh, we'll pick a random comment mm-hmm. on there that has done it since this thing. And, uh, you'll be entered to win. And also, if you're super cool and we're commenting already, I guess you'll just be yeah. automatically entered. And also, secondary, we wanted to add another layer to it. Mm-hmm. Since we started the Discord, um, we want you to join the Discord, which I'm not going to go through and read the address again. I'm sorry right. about that. Uh, back up to the beginning of the episode. Or go to the YouTube channel, because you can click on the link from any YouTube video. And join Discord, because we're going to start the... We're going to try to start the two-man... Secret Santa. Yeah. So if you want to be a part of that, join the Discord. We are we haven't started the channel for that yet, but we'll have a thing where you can say, hey, I want to be a part of that, and then we'll figure out the whole all the details. And if you want to spend 20 to 30 bucks to give somebody else the gift of comics this year Which and get something cool from somebody else, uh, and then we'll work out the details of the shipping and everything, whether you want to give us the address and we will pass it on to that person or you would feel more comfortable if we act as the middleman, yep. which we're totally happy to do. Anyway, yeah, so you got to join the Discord for that. Um, so do that and interact That's with us. That's going to be super cool. I mean, like, there's a lot of people that might just be listeners that mm-hmm. don't either have a comic shop next to them or just don't know what to get into. So uh, your gift of a comic book could uh, send them down the, the path of darkness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And maybe, you know, maybe you'll be the lucky person who's not only on the Discord doing the Secret Santa, but maybe you also win the thing, and this will be uh, the drawing. This will be a true comic book Christmas for you. Yeah, super cool. Glad we're able to do this. It uh, was a lot of fun last year, and yep. excited to do it again. Uh, any other thoughts before we jump into the first three issues of this Eternals run? Uh, probably not. Cool. Uh, so do you want to give us a 60-second catch-up? As much as I can. I love ketchup. Uh, I do love ketchup as well, man. Uh, so the Eternals, uh, originally created by the OG, the granddaddy of comics, Jack the Man King Kirby. Though, if you think back to our 60-second ketchup for Mr. Miracle, mm-hmm. you'll notice, and you might notice, I think we mentioned it then, but there's a lot of parallels between the new gods of DC and the Eternals of Marvel. So yes, because he interesting. did create both of them. So this most recent run is by... Kieran Gillen, Esed Ribich, and Matthew Wilson. The Eternals are uh, essentially these superpowered beings that were given their powers by the Celestials who experimented on early man uh, many millions of years ago uh, in canon. So they have superpowers. All of them are a little bit different. They're they're not completely unlike uh, your your kind of mutant or your new or, or your inhuman rather. And the fact that they all have like a different power, you know, they're all super powerful. Um, there are a offset of Eternals that are called Deviants, which are always changing. And they're kind of this, um, I don't know, for lack of a better term, like this bastardized version of them that is like kind of encapsulates evil. And the Eternals' only real job is to get rid of any deviation from Eternals and that's when they're allowed to interfere and like protect humanity. So um, both of them got their powers in Celestials. There's several of them. I'm not super familiar with all their names. We have uh, Icarus, we have Festos, we have uh, Thena, we have Sprite, we have Druig, we have uh, Cersei. I'm sure I'm forgetting several of them. Um, Did a better job than I would have. Yeah. There, there's a lot of them. I think there's like a hunt. Like in the beginning, there were a hundred Eternals right. and a hundred Deviants. And now there's like, and there's way less now. At some point, 
I, I watched uh, one of the variant comic things mm-hmm. uh, where they were talking about it. And at some, because there have been a couple different reboots of this. You had the Jack Kirby one. There was one that Neil Gaiman did that right. I read. It was pretty good. They think that that's what the new movie is going to be based off a lot of. Cool. Um, and another one somewhere in there. And then this one. And that's, this one is ongoing right now, yes, by the way, that we're yes. covering. Uh, and the guy on Variant did make the comment that, I think this was during the Neil Gaiman one, at one point you have a hundred uh, Eternals fighting a million deviants. I think that was back right. before humankind actually took over the planet, so mm-hmm. maybe it's leveled off since then, but yeah, unbalanced. Yeah, for sure. They're, they're super powerful, and uh, it's funny, like, Speaking of the movie coming out, there's been a lot of people asking because it's been kind of played up. Like these Eternals are super powerful, um, like probably could not only hang with the Avengers, but maybe even mm-hmm. be stronger than they're kind of like gods. Yeah. Um, and they're like, OK, well, where were they when Thanos was taking over? And I think they're going to answer that in the movie, but it's more or less they were instructed by the Celestials do yeah. not interfere unless it's to stop deviance. Mm-hmm. Um, which is kind of interesting because Thanos is like a eternal deviant hybrid, mm-hmm. which most people don't know. He's actually know the cousin of Thana, one yeah. of the Eternals. Um, at least I think that's still canon. Um, maybe we can find that out later. I actually always wondered. I was like, why is it that this guy is so powerful? I didn't even know right. when I was watching the MCU stuff that Thanos had anything going on with this. Right. Yeah, he. Uh, I do a little bit of... Uh, kind of a Jonathan Hickman-esque with the charts Mm -hmm. in this run. I want to say something about that real quick. Mm -hmm. I, you know, the Jonathan Hickman charts during Powers and House were really interesting. Uh, They got less and less so because there was just so much to read. Mm -hmm. Um, This one, I didn't feel like in the six issues I've read so far, it never got to the point where I was like, all right, just hurry up and say it. And I felt like this guy, which the charts, he's actually personifying Earth, which we'll get into. Um, but I felt like those charts were awesome because they were like a mixture between the tone and the creations of like Jonathan Hickman, uh, Douglas Adams, because they were always just kind of funny. Right. And there were, oh, there was a third person that I thought that it was all like a combination of. Anyway, but it was, those, I, I found them always fun. Like even in terms of reading the little intro, yeah. uh, like, it, oh, that's what it was. It was a Matt Fraction. Like the mm-hmm. way that the, he writes out the Hawkeye intro stuff. It right. felt akin to that uh, and all those other guys I mentioned. They're, they're funny. So like yeah. actually take the time and read them. I mean, for instance, in the very intro, I'm getting ahead, but the the very first page where he's giving the credits, <laughs> it's like a long, long time ago, alien space gods came to Earth. Oh, yeah, right here. They made 100 Eternals, 100 de- Deviants. They left. Shrug emoticon. <laughs> Right. And I'm just like, all right. Yeah. Uh, that's that's where we're going with yeah, this. Quick summary. And so. then right there immediately you get like all these eternals and where they live and who they are and like how they all work with everybody. And that's a few pages in. We're we haven't actually talked talked about how we start this, but it's worth every single one of those little uh information pages had something funny going on. Right. And same thing because he ends up being the narrator through the entire run that I've read so far. Yeah. And typically it's it's funny. It's yeah. not just like generic, boring, this is what's happening inside right. people's minds. It's it's funny. It has a little bit of that flavor that Tom King had with the vision, the yeah. narration that was going mm-hmm. through that um, the whole time. Uh, it's not quite the same, but it definitely adds to the story, I think. Okay, so I think we're ready to get started and jump into issue one. We're going to give you a little bit of a higher level run just because there's so many of these mm-hmm. And uh, we want to get through them all and just kind of give you the high points. But uh, essentially, we start off and we see Icarus, who is one of the stronger Eternals, being reborn. So that's kind of an understood thing. The Eternals, they can die, but they are just reincarnated pretty quickly. It's just like they're they're eternal, right? And the, you know, yeah. it's one of the one of the things in their name. So he, uh, we find out that he is the was the last one to die from whatever he was just killed from. So that is why he's the last one to wake. And they ask, like, there's this machine asking him, like, Icarus, what are the principles? And it says, protect celestials, protect the machine, correct S- excess deviation, that deviation directly pointing to the deviance. So, And while we're just getting started, I think mm-hmm. it's important to take a second to mention the art that happens throughout this. Yeah. Esed Ribich, like, 
he he did the art for the Thor, Jason Aaron Thor run mm-hmm. that I read. And that might have been the first time I'd ever seen art like that in comic books. Yeah. So it was really refreshing coming back to it. Like every page is a painting. Mm-hmm. And so it's not it's not all cartoonish. It's not pop art type stuff. It is right. You could you could take a handful of these pages and hang them in a museum. Yeah. And I think it would be totally legit. So I'm like on one now, Tori, if you'll pan to that, like you can just see like this giant sweeping space. Like he takes a lot of time to put in some detail, but also kind of let you fill in stuff. And I got to say that's Esed Ribich for the lines. Matthew Wilson was one that was color artist for that. So seriously, okay, yeah, yeah. kudos. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing I will say, just this is minor complaint, probably more personal to me. Sometimes the faces can get a little, especially yeah. on Icarus, they get a little crow magnon which mm-hmm. maybe that's on purpose knowing that that's, I don't know if that's a direct correlation to mm-hmm. them being experimented on from early man, but it they just look a little weird. Like this one right here kind of, uh, just a little interesting to me. Very uh, sunken in eyes and yeah. hanging, drooping mouth. So, <coughs> excuse me. Right. Sorry if your eardrums <laughs> exploded. Um, anyway, so, uh, we kind of get this overarching narrative that <clears throat> Icarus has always been this living arrow, just that, you know, super offensive, ready to hit something super hard. Um, but as soon as he is awakened, um, he is basically sent with a task to go and waken another Eternal who has been, or not uh, not awaken, I guess release. Was Sprite gone or he was actually just uh, captured? So, sorry, she was in the in excursions, ex- exclusions, I think. Where it's like essentially their prison. Right. And we, he's going to let them out. Okay, so <clears throat> Zerus is, I think they called him the Prime Eternal. Is that what it was? That sounds right. Uh, is that, what is it? I said that sounds right. Okay, yeah. So Zerus is kind of like their their king. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he kind of equates to the High Father, if you want to do some parallels to uh, the new gods. And uh, he instructs Icarus to go and release Sprite um, because it's time to let her go, and they basically allude to, like, maybe that's not a good idea, but we have to do it anyway, because Icarus says, whatever happens next is your fault. Mm-hmm. And uh, he just kind of says, many things are my fault. I'm the eternal prime. It's my job to have things be my fault. But anyway, he goes to release this other eternal named Sprite, who I think it's... Um, I think it's part of this character's kind of, like, history and legacy that they are a little bit... Um, androgynous, like they switch mm-hmm. back and forth um, from what they look like, like on all the ends of the spectrum and everywhere in between. So they kind of comment on that right now, like or somewhere in here. I can't remember exactly where it was. Um, but anyway, uh, Icarus goes and lets Sprite out, and Sprite starts running around and getting on people's nerves immediately. And uh, we quickly find ourselves going through this portal straight to Earth, right? And we end up in New York yes. City. Um, yeah. Do you want to walk them through? We have a, a cameo of yeah. people or somebody that we would for sure recognize. Yeah. So I was kind of curious when this was happening because I had read the Neil Gaiman uh, run beforehand, and I do feel like this is what's what we're about to see is fallout from that. Yeah. Because they do have run in with specific uh, people in the Marvel universe, and we get to see some of that right now. But anyway, Sprite is running around. Uh, Times Square or something like that. And people are just taking pictures, stopping and like, uh, uh, it's nothing new. You know, this is the Marvel right. New York. So anyway, Icarus runs out and gets, gets um, Sprite. And basically he's like, we need to, we need to go. Um, but before they're able to do anything, a man descends from the sky <laughs> wearing a red and gold armor suit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tony Stark. And but they have a conversation like they know each other, mm-hmm. and it's right here we realize oh, the the Eternals and the Avengers have worked together before, and in fact uh, one of the members of the Eternals was an Avenger for a time. Uh, I think S- what what was her name? Saras Cersei Cersei. Yep. <laughs> uh, and that's who uh, Tony Stark's asking. I was like, good, tell Cersei that she should give me a call. So you know, right, being a womanizer or whatever. I don't know if that's the right term, but they they were either an item or Tony wanted them to be an item right. in the last I mean, Tony kind of has a history of wanting to be an item, at least temporarily, with everybody. But, yeah. So uh, they're sitting there, and all of a sudden they're talking, and 
Icarus doubles over because uh, Voice is talking to him. Excess deviation that he has to go hunt for, and Iron Man's like, hey, is there a problem? Do I need to help? Right. And I, I like this scene. Uh, Sprite's like, yes. And Icarus is like, no. And then in the next panel, Sprite's like, no. And Icarus is like, no. So Right. I will say up here was where they actually kind of comment yeah. on it. Uh, Iron Man's like, uh, no, I guess Cersei's, uh, sorry, Sprite. I'm still getting used to all these names. Yeah. Sprite's like, has Cersei been collecting humans again? And Iron Man is like, uh, I'm not a collectible young lady <laughs> and I'm not defending my masculinity to Icarus. Who is this? And Icarus explains like, she's Sprite. We've had a full reboot of the Eternals and many have taken advantage to change appearances. It's common. Yeah, yeah. So they do kind of change how they look like or how they look throughout times mm -hmm. as they become reincarnated. And he does say, I've never seen this before. And he's like, ah, but it is common every 20 or 25,000 years. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was, yeah. But if you're an Eternal, 20 years probably isn't Drop all that different bucket. than 25,000 years. Right. <clears throat> anyway, so we find them crawling down into the sewage, sewage. system and uh, quickly, you know, just moving along, they find themselves fighting down and staring down this pretty giant deviant. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. something to note, I have one pulled up on the panels here. This looks like this giant, grotesque alien thing. Um, but this is definitely not a 100% representation of what all deviants look I like. They all look different. They all yeah. deviate in their looks. Yeah. You know, it's kind of, again, in the name. So they're fighting this one. We have an allusion to just how powerful Icarus here. It says, uh, with Icarus, it would be a fight. With Sprite, it would be a game for both. It is simply what they have done for a million years. So mm -hmm. even, though, even though there's this giant deviant here that looks like it could cause a lot of damage, this is par for the course of something they're used to doing, correcting excess deviation. Yeah. I mean, they just and they just have a fight that lasts several pages, mm -hmm. and we don't really see how it wraps up, but all of a sudden Sprite and Icarus are back on the streets of New York, standing in front of a hot dog vendor. So it's just like, <laughs> apparently yeah. they got it sorted out. Right. Uh, there's kind of a funny moment with that log dog, log dog, hot dog. Mm -hmm. uh, Sprite's like, uh, can I eat this? And Icarus is like, I wouldn't recommend it, but you're going to love Ty. Yeah. Uh, and he also kind of compliments himself. Oh, I forgot about that. Can work. Later on, Ty yeah. is there. Uh, and then they walk through a portal, and we are in Olympia. Yes. Which I, this is interesting. Uh, it says, Olympia, northern Greece, folded behind Mount Olympus in an echo dimension. Yeah. Like, I, I sat there just... <clears throat> speculating what that was like for a minute. Yeah, I think was, we'll probably try to point those out. Every time there's a location change, they do have a little, ast not an asterisk actually there, but just a, a variation, a deviation, if you will, mm -hmm. of what the actual place that they're in because it's not a 100%, oh, they're in Olympia, but there's sometimes time and space uh, variations on where they're at. Mm -hmm. So we see Fastos for the first time, Um and he's kind of warning them. He's like, uh, there's, uh, what does he say here? Uh, fear, there's always fear of me and Icarus. Hey, fast, let's go looking. Oh, yeah, he's just commenting on Zerus, so who we know is the Eternal Prime. And we quickly find out that Zerus, who instructed Icarus to go and free Sprite before they had their little uh, trip to New York, is dead. Yeah. So all the Eternals just came back, and now suddenly their Prime Eternal is gone already. Somebody's killed him. Uh, this is met with like not too much shock. Like they immediately kind of go, what was the murder weapon? And it says five fingers pressing in on his skull with enormous power. That's all they knew. I will say as soon as I heard that, I had one very specific thought. Sure. I, I had two just because I was wondering like, okay, I know, I know Thanos is related to the Eternals. So that's my first guess, but also like, the Incredible Hulk, yeah, uh, the thing. I think, well, but even he's a hero, though. So. Granted, the reason I thought Thanos mm -hmm. is because I had seen some of the other covers, and oh, I was okay. just like, "Well, he's coming up." Um, but at the time, I didn't even realize his significance. That <clears throat> we kind of talked about in the sixty-second catch-up, right, of him having eternal deviant lineage. So. Sure, yeah. So <clears throat> they quickly, they just go into detective work right away. Like uh, Fasto says. It must have happened shortly after he told you to free Sprite, whoever it was via the network, or arrived via the network and escaped afterward, identity masked or lost. And uh, they're basically like, well, if he used it, or if they use the network, they have to be an Eternal. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how this works. And uh, 
Druig comes in and he is going to be in the film also. He seems to be, they compare him here this, to this first appearance. They say, if Icarus is an arrow, Druig is a snake. Yeah. So he's kind of that Jafar, that Scar character that's kind of like your evil stepbrother that, you know, maybe is technically related to you, but you don't uh, actually get along. And he's immediately a character of suspicion mm-hmm. just of how they present him. <clears throat> so they're looking and trying to figure out who killed him, but they're all kind of talking about it very matter of fact because they know that they can bring him back. Like yeah. that's just how it, how it's going. But Druig is basically saying like, Hey, um, we have to pick a new prime eternal because that's just the order of how things go. You know, if we're missing one, we got to get one. Um, but also they're wanting to wait. Some of them are arguing like we should wait till we revive him so he can tell us who did this. And, uh, we also get the sense that Icarus and Druig do not get along at all. And uh, after kind of some spatting and like some verbal threats, uh, one with Icarus saying that he was going to break Druig's nose, he actually ends up headbutting him after Icar- or Druig mm-hmm. puts his hand on Icarus, just kind of like assertively. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was basically like, you've known me for a million years. Do you think it was an idle threat that I made to you 30 seconds ago? So again, just a little more insight into what these characters are like and then their relationships towards each other. So they're running along. Now the the part of the comic is here. We got to figure out who just killed the Prime Eternal. Mm-hmm. Um, it is an interesting like like way to do it. Like normally, if somebody's murdered that big, you know, this Eternal Prime, he kind of gives me Black Bolt vibes too. Whenever I was looking at him, uh, mm-hmm. Zerus, just not necessarily in anything but his his role. Like we are sh- for sure supposed to care, but it's kind of taken away a little bit when when characters are essentially immortal, you know. So they are able to trace the transit and like the distortion that was created when whoever this murderer was used their network to get in and out of murdering Zerus. So they're going to the last known place where they left and it takes them to Titanos, which is not to be mistaken as Titan, I don't believe, unless unless those are the same thing and I'm just thinking that they changed it for the MCU, but we were on Titan Maybe they yeah. did do that. I mean, whenever I look around the terrain of this Titanos, it looks yeah. a lot like Titan in the MCU. It does. So Maybe it they just slightly changed the the pronunciation or whatever. But um, the other little caption they have here, it says, Fallen capital of the Eternals, superimposed between three seconds from now and two seconds ago. So there's like a little bit of a temporal space-time mm-hmm. thing of where they're at. But as soon as you end up on Titanos, you make it even more... Uh, direct connection, the Mad Titan being on Titanos. Yeah. We know that that's probably where we're le- where we're leading. So uh, Icarus says, be careful. I would rather you not be there because Sprite's still with him. And uh, as they go through, they're just noticing like just kind of a weird ambiance of things going on here. There's some dead bodies floating mm-hmm. around in this space. It's like the gravity doesn't exactly work like it does on Earth. Um, and as they're looking around... They, uh, Icarus has this like vision vision of a gravestone that says Toby Robson died 13 years old. Mm-hmm. And uh, it just shows him, like his vision, he sees himself standing at this grave just saying, I'm sorry, implying that he's responsible for this somehow. And uh, he doesn't know how or who this person is even. He just has this vision suddenly. They do have a conversation and Sprite's like, oh my, that looks so sad. Is that someone you knew? And right. basically he's like, no, I don't know. It's not an event that has occurred. I do not know this boy, but he's going to live. Right. You know? So that's going to play off or not necessarily finish paying off, but we're going to pull on that thread pretty soon Yeah. Um, with Icarus for sure. And <clears throat> the next panel, like as soon as I started reading these words, yeah, I heard like just the way that they constructed these sentences. I was like, yeah. oh. That sounds like, what's the name of the... I, I heard it in the guy's voice from Brolin. the MCU. Yeah. Josh Brolin. Yeah. I, I heard it. I can't... Him uh, saying that. He will forever be Thanos' voice yeah. now. It, it works so perfectly. But I'll just read that. Yeah. So as soon as he says he's going to live, there's this voice off, care, uh, off panel that says, more eternal blasphemy, an affront against the universe. All that live must die. When I am done, there will be but a single thing that is eternal. <clears throat> and then switching to the next page, we have this towering Thanos Mm -hmm. standing over Icarus and just finishing his sentence. He says, death, like that will be what is eternal. And uh, 
it's a pretty ominous giant panel, like just being able to see mm-hmm. scale of how big Thanos is compared to Icarus. Now we do know that Icarus is he's you know, he can hold his own. Like mm-hmm. so we're not necessarily like scared for his life, but it is Thanos. He's kind of understood to be like the big bad of the Marvel universe. And that's the end of the issue. So to recap, Icarus awakens the the machine as they call it. Uh, is running checks to make sure that it still knows um, that Icarus still knows his purpose. He goes to awaken Sprite at the order of Zerus and comes back to Zerus being murdered. The Eternals not knowing who did it and having qualms over how they should handle this. And then following the trace to Titanos where they run into the mad Titan himself. I should mention that through this entire comic, the machine that revives the Eternals and runs the network and is kind of like a eternal Jarvis, if you will, Mm -hmm. has been making comments about itself not quite functioning correctly. So as we've been, as it's been narrating and give us backstories for these Eternals, it's been making kind of passive comments, the saying like, Oh, something's not right. I, I'm a little more talkative than I have been. Um, I don't know if, at the end of six issues that we've read so far, that it, that uh, question has been answered of what or why, or I'm just forgetting. It's kind of answered, okay. um, but it's like about halfway through. Okay, I'm sure my memory will be jogged. But yeah, that's the end of issue one. Uh, any thoughts on that one? Interesting. Um, nice setup. It, it made me think back a whole lot to the Eternals that I had read. Right. Um, wondering what the direct correlation was and everything. Um, that definitely poses a lot of questions that, that you wonder how yeah. it's going to be wrapped up. Right. Um, I do like that they, I mean, I think purposely so, they give you Iron Man and Thanos, two mm-hmm. very popular characters because of the movies and the comics, to kind of ground it a little bit for people that are like just completely, who's Icarus? Yeah. Who's Sprite? Who's Druig? Who's Fastos? Um it just kind of helps ground the characters a little more than also pull some weight into it. Um, we're doing this all new a little bit with this recording thing. So we are going to take a break, but we are not going to actually cut recording. <laughs> so don't cut record, uh, but we will be right back. I hit it too soon. So uh, that's my problem. Not yeah. yours. Cool. Uh, we can jump on to issue two. I'm going to pull that one up. Also, I will note, I like, I love when they do this. They just give you a splash page at the end of issue one of all the variant covers. Mm-hmm. They're not full screen, but it is still just nice to see what all the art of the artists did. Yeah. Um, cool. Do you want to start us off with issue two, my friend? Yeah, so we pick up right where we left off with the Icarus Thanos fight on Titanos. And I don't know, once again, it's just there's a very poetic way that Thanos speaks and he keeps doing it all the way through. But there, you can tell that both of them seem to be having a good time with this. Yeah. Icarus Mm -hmm. is a little bit of a, I mean, they make the comment a bunch of times. He is an arrow and arrow has one job and he enjoys it. Yeah. The arrow has got to go hit its target, you know? So like he's, he likes to fight. It's a little bit of Thor, which is kind Mm -hmm. of appropriate because there are moments when, because of the same artist, he looks like a young Thor. Yeah. But they start fighting, and eventually it escalates, and then they start. It. I was having a flashback to the "What If" episode yeah. um, with Ultron fighting uh, the Awatu, the like going yeah. through different uh, things, and that's kind of what yeah. they're doing. We see them. Did you mention this is his first time to fight Thanos? Like he oh, comments, I he says, "I've never fought Thanos." I um, didn't catch that. You know, and he's like excited for the challenge. Anyway, you were saying. But it shows them kind of zipping through different portals. We see them with dinosaurs. We see them looking yeah, right like here. some future time. We see them in kind of the medieval times, just zipping through the air, through portals as they're fighting and eventually landing back on Titanos. Yeah, I like this. It says the fight lasts for seconds. The fight lasts for all of history. Mm-hmm. It is a good fight. Think Icarus as his skin ignites. I would yeah. concur. And it looks like Thanos is standing over Sprite and then all at once... Uh, oh wait, no, I got I'm <laughs> over Icarus. Over Icarus, yeah. And all of a sudden, Thanos just grabs Icarus's head and just rips it off. Yeah, it's pretty pretty intense. And you know, by that point, I'd realize, oh, they can just bring him back. No right. big deal. 
Yeah, but, but it's still a pretty gnarly way to kill somebody because you. Th- I mean, he hangs with him just fine, and then it's just like it took one second for mm-hmm. him to get the upper edge. He literally rips Icarus's head off while Icarus is shooting laser beams yeah. out of his eyes. And then um, the next panel, you have this dumbfounded look on Thanos's face as he's looking down at the body that should be disappearing or should be still be there, but it's like slowly disappearing. And he's like, wait, what just happened? And we realized that like Sprite had pulled a trick on Icarus yeah, or using on Icarus Thanos. on Thanos. And they're basically running away. And uh, I can't remember. Basically Sprite is like, flashback. you know, it's my job to keep you out of doing this. Like, yeah. you know, I understand when it, you're hitting your peak and mm-hmm. Sprite knew that if it went much longer, that a uh, vision might have actually come true as far as like, well, yeah. it wasn't a vision. The trick yeah. could have gone through. Thanos had the upper hand. He's just flat out stronger than Icarus. Yeah. At least in this. I don't know how that stands uh, long term. And then we have a little flashback scene um, that's kind of setting the tone for the thing with Toby Robson. Yeah. Um, and uh, Icarus like lands. I guess he has another vision of somebody dying from fighting a deviant, and so he goes and meets this person who's like, hey, I'm going to save you when this thing shows up. Just call for me. Right. And then it shows... This is like a, a way back in way time. Back, like yeah. this, this person looks just past caveman. They can communicate, but they're mm-hmm. sitting in a loincloth, mm-hmm. sitting on a beach. And basically, long story short, this guy forsakes his entire life just sitting there waiting for this to happen, and he's an old man on his deathbed. And he's like, he's had a family that he's never been around and all this stuff. And finally, uh, they, I think they light the beacon, his, his kids do. To honor him as honor he him. dies. Yeah. And Icarus finally shows up and they yell at him. He's like, why, why did you do this? You know, why he wasted his entire life. And then right at that moment, the deviant shows up mm-hmm. and Icarus realizes, oh, it wasn't this guy. It was his grandson or something like that. So right. he goes off, he fights, everybody loves him or whatever. You know, it's yeah. like, I was just, I just picked the wrong person. And yeah, there is were, this kind of a uh, sense and they comment on it. Like Icarus is like, most of these humans think that we're gods and all that is, is annoying to the actual gods. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I mean, it is one of those perspective things, you know, they, they essentially are gods. They can't die. They're super powerful. They're not quite like, uh, what's the word? Omnipresent. Uh, yeah, but they, they, they might as well be, but anyway, carry on. Well, I'm trying to be quick. Cause like, I feel like the next mini pages basically amounts to, uh, Icarus and them trying to tell him, Hey, it was Th- Thanos was here people not believing him, but also just the finger pointing begins of who killed the prime eternal. Right. You know, and they're all. Yeah. Cersei basically comes in and uh, kind of stops them from all fighting Mm -hmm. each other. And they decide that they're going to split up and head to uh, talk to Thana, correct? Who is on a different Uh, planet. Yeah. Yeah. She's, I think they, I don't know if I'm getting ahead of myself, but she's with the deviants. Right. Yeah, yeah that's uh, that's something I don't know. Um, yeah, I didn't quite get it. If she has like a history of like trying to leave her duties as an Eternal, they kind of hint at that. Cersei and Thana don't quite get along, at least in this. I'm curious to see if they do something similar in the movie. Mm-hmm. But uh, basically they they send, a, let's see, Fastos, Sprite, um. I don't think King goes in this. Cersei and somebody else go and try to find Thana, and Icarus actually goes back to New York to find this Tony Robson kid. Yeah. And uh, he literally just in the middle of the night, like, taps <laughs> on his window. The kid opens up. He's like, are you Toby Robson? And the kid's like, maybe. And he says, I am Icarus from the Eternals. I will protect you. If it's required, I would give my very mm-hmm. life for yours. Yeah. Uh, the kid's like, neat, can I close the window now? I'm getting <laughs> soaked because there's like a yeah. rainstorm going on. And then the narration says, Robson thinks this is a dream. Close, but not correct. The accurate word is longer, mm-hmm. starts with an N, involves more screaming. Yeah. And uh, we end the issue there. Yeah. So kind of a shorter issue too, just setting mm-hmm. up more plot. But essentially it's, we have a plan now to find out who killed, uh, what's his name? S- something that I'm so I've already bad. forgotten. 
Zuma. Zeris. Zeris with a Z. Okay. Z. Yeah. Um, and then we had introduced to Cersei. So I think I got ahead of myself. I think issue three is yeah. where we actually get to see uh, Thana. It's what opens it up, yeah. With the deviants. So let me go to That's that. That's literally book. what opens up the thing. And she's just laying in bed with this blue guy. Yeah. And <laughs> Some, I don't know if he is a deviant. Or if he's just I, I alien, feel like he is probably yeah, which because, maybe that's like uh, blasphemy. Yeah, again, I'm so like fresh on the Eternals. I don't know like the lore of like oh it's yeah you can't you can't just go live with some deviants. You're an Eternal. Your primary objective is to correct deviation, not yeah. live with them. And it does say we are in Lemuria, which is positioned in a reality haunt adjacent to the Pacific Ocean floor. And I believe this is where the deviants reside. Okay, yeah, that's right. Because uh, there's kind of like levels to this. So the Eternals are like up at the mountain peaks, uh, mm-hmm. a la heaven esque, kind of like at Zeus, mm-hmm. like Mount Olympus. Humans are on Earth, which are are an important part of this. They're like considered essential to this triangle, if you will, of everything. There's mm-hmm. Eternals, humans, and deviants, and then the deviants are in the center of the Earth or down in the ocean but not necessarily in water, if that makes yeah. sense. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, carry on. So basically, eventually somebody jumps in and we find out that a whole collection of these, uh, of Eternals, are going to try to retrieve Thana uh, just to see what's going on. Mm-hmm. We have Sprite, we have Kingo, we have uh, Cersei. And basically, they just need to get her because they're having to question everybody. You know, right, and they want to bring her back th- to tell her what happened to I forgot his name, Zerus. Zerus, <laughs> yeah, I will Which never is her remember her father. That. That's Thana's father. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, okay. Um, she takes the news that he's dead pretty well. Yeah, <laughs> wait, are you saying Zerus is dead? Yeah, and then we uh, turn the page, and Icarus is still in New York, uh, just hovering there. Watching the, <laughs> the Robson, the, the dad of yeah. this guy just walks out. He's eating something. And he just kind of looks up and he's like, wait, what? And basically they, he's like, uh, you're attracting attention. If you've got to watch, could you at least do it from inside or something? Right. Because the whole neighborhood is watching. So Yeah, it's funny. They kind of touch on this a little bit. It's just about, I mean, it is New York. They're mm-hmm. kind of numb to superheroes. So the fact that this... Uh, this eternal who very much parallels Superman in a lot of ways. Yeah, totally. Um, is kind of hovering above them and it's more just a, a nuisance or a distraction than it is like a, if it were to actually happen in real life, it would, mm-hmm. it would make headlines constantly, but yeah. they're just more annoyed by it than anything. But it, it kind of turns around because finally he goes inside mm-hmm. and they give him some coffee and they ask something like, are you a guardian angel? And he was like, well, no, but I suppose today I am. Right. And basically he levels with the family. He's like, I'm worried about your son and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm here to protect him. And he like wins them over. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wins them over and basically just says like the coffee's good. And he switches over to another panel with Thana going through and they're, mm-hmm. they're discussing um, again, how to find the murderer because they can't come to terms. Well, they're understandably. So all they know is it was likely an eternal. Somebody on yeah. the inside was the one that let, either did the murder or let the murderer in. Because only an Eternal could transport through their system. Correct. So that's their logic. Um, So we have this kind of flashback to 100,000 years ago of um, Thana and Cersei talking more um, about uh, Thana taking on different deviants as lovers through over the the millennia. And um, it, it just being a question as far as like, we saw earlier that she kind of had a small fight with her father before he died. Mm-hmm. We know that she has fallen in love with deviants who are essentially the enemies of the Eternals. So maybe she finally cracked and had one of them kill her father. She would obviously be able to traverse the network safely. So she is kind of a prime suspect. Um, so they in this flashback, they have Cersei's like, follow me and... uh that's, that's right. Isn't that right? They have somebody... Is it Cersei that follows her? Or? I can't remember. Yeah, okay. So Cersei says, follow me. And they take her like deeper into this cavern and uh, they show her this like space where all these deviants or this one mm-hmm. that she's been like in love with has been like 
experimenting on, um, is it experimenting on Eternals or on humans? Just trying to like figure out how to. That whole scene was just, I, I was having a hard trouble, hard time following it. Yeah. It, it's like they're trying to figure out the powers of the Eternals somehow. So basically yeah. this deviant is pretended to be in love with Thena so he could experiment on either humans or other Eternals to get the powers of the Eternals. Like he's purely been using her as the message here. Mm. So she thought she was in love with this guy. That's kind of what they were talking about. And she immediately pulls out a sword and uh, kills this guy. And uh, I, I kind of liked how they put it here. They put, Thana would argue, say that he is like her in every way that counts, but it's too late. It lurches for the near gods and Thana's heart aches, but Thana's love is not soft. It has a sharp edge when it needs one. The love cuts until there is nothing else and the room is full of chunks all too small of mortal flesh. Before the end, Saigo realizes what a fearful thing Thana's love is. So she loved him, but she killed him for betraying him like instantly without thinking about it. Um, and it, it messes her up pretty bad, but essentially this whole scene is just pointing to there's a history of Thana maybe making questionable calls uh, at the behest of the Eternal's well-being. Um, so yeah, we move forward and there's a message from Druig mm-hmm. and basically he has shown up to his home and everybody's dead. Yeah. So he is also like aware of what this looks like because that also means that there's another like opening polit there's like a lot of political play here as yeah. well. Like because everybody at his home is gone, it would naturally mean that he is gonna be the like the new high command, like the ruler of Polaria, which is where he's at. And uh he's basically like, Yes, I'm a suspect now, aren't I? Like, you know, mm-hmm. he's just very matter of fact, he knows how this works. And uh that's the end of the yeah. issue. So, and it shows the last page is like a list of all the people that have been killed. And there are a ton of people in Polaria and there's like five left, right. six, something. Yeah. So issues two and three go by pretty quick, yeah. more there's, or less. I mean, we definitely kind of move through them because there's a lot of conversations yeah. being had. Given a little bit of a look back and then yeah. setting up the, it's the, finger, and the finger pointing it yeah. and also the deal with Toby Robson. Right. That's, that's. It, yeah, right? so we're we're split up a little bit. Um, I, I'm I'm aware that maybe like the way that we went through it might make you think, oh, what's going on here? This isn't very exciting, but mm-hmm. I, it's more engaging than what we let on. We we just don't want to sit here and read verbatim the yeah. comic for you. It's it's definitely worth reading. The art actually supplements it quite a bit as well. So um, we've set up the Eternals are back, but they're they're quickly fighting themselves that their leaders are being destroyed pretty quickly, mm-hmm. and. Again, it has to be somebody on the inside, but they're all with each other too, so it's even more menacing. They're like, how do we actually get a one-up on this person who has a one-up on us if they're literally listening to the conversation? It could be anybody Mm -hmm. that we've seen so far or somebody that we haven't. Um, Yeah, what did you think about these first three? Uh, It was interesting, like you said. The the last two we read were just setting things up. I feel like things start moving more swiftly and things start connecting a lot more in the following three episode issues. Correct. Yeah, I think the same thing. Um, yeah, that's all I have for that one. Do we uh, want to jump to some trivia? Yeah. And in case you're curious, uh, I'm cueing the music live right now, and I don't remember which one I'm supposed to press right now. So we're going to guess. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's try this one. Let's. We'll be right back. It works. Yeah. Is it really necessary for us to even use this right now? No, we can maybe get something else for trivia, <laughs> but here we are. And we're back for our two-man trivia where our questions are faster than fastos fasting on a Friday. Fantastic. Yeah. Just pulled that out of uh, my fastos. <laughs> uh, cool. This is a fresh round of trivia, so it is zero zero. Uh, Drew, do you want to go first? Sure. I have two possible questions, and only one of them is actually opening, Mm -hmm. so we're going to go with that one. Right. Uh, This is an easy one, and I'm assuming you're going to get it right, though I won't think any less of you if you don't. What if it's the same question? It might be. Yeah. Uh, We have to quit the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Again. (laughs) Again. Um, So, uh, movie that's dropping today, tomorrow. Yeah. 
Who directed it? Uh, Oscar winning Chloe Zhao. Yes, you get a point. <laughs> Sweet. Well, that was easy. Yeah. Um, I'm actually really excited about it, though. I'm glad you asked that because she is an incredible director who has a uh, a liking for like practical sets and going on location. So I'm anticipating beautiful visuals at some very cool places on planet Earth that they found that looked otherworldly or just um, incredible in general. So Neat. she she uh, she's in pretty. It just shows that uh, Marvel goes out of their way to find directors who make good films. They're not just like, oh, that's who's done action films. Uh, let Michael Bay do every Marvel movie. You know, uh, super excited. I think it's going to be really cool. Um, there's a chance, uh, actually even a likelihood that you'll also get a point right now. But for the education of the fans, of the two-man fans. Yeah. Uh, Jack Kirby created both the Eternals and the New Gods. One of them came first. The New Gods. The New Gods came first. That is correct. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to ask you if you knew which ones came first. <laughs> yeah, well, because I yes. it happened relatively, they were within five years of each mm-hmm. other. So um, most he, people know that there was kind of a falling out yeah. with Marvel. Jack Kirby left for DC is kind of a big deal. I mean, yeah. it can be argued to this day even that he more so than Stan Lee was kind of like the bread and butter of what was actually creating all the characters and, and doing things. Not that Stan Lee and Steve Ditko and all those were were void of creation for Marvel, but Mm -hmm. Jack Kirby pulled a lot of the weight there. Um, So he always wanted to tell this story. He did it at New Gods with DC and then I guess had more to tell with those types of characters, Mm -hmm. but obviously couldn't bring those properties over when he went back to Marvel. I believe it was in 71. It's when he did the New Gods and then 76 for the uh, Eternals. I don't Um, know which one. I've been trying to think which one do I prefer, and I can't answer that just yet. Yeah, it's hard. I also, like, like elements of both. Sure. Um, also, just as far as like what I've read, I mean, Mr. Miracle's up there for me as like favorite comic mm-hmm. runs ever, especially the Tom King one. See, I feel like I understand the purpose of the Eternals mm-hmm. infinitely better than I understand the purpose of the New Gods. What are they doing? I mean, really, yeah. what are they doing? Yeah, they exist just kind of on their there. own plane. They're on their own plane outside of the multiverse. And, you know, ultimately... Dark side comes out of it, which wreaks havoc. So right. that's huge. But like the, so I understand Dark side because he becomes a villain. Where oh yeah, he there's actually even came parallels from, there too. Yeah. Like, I mean, Dark side and Thanos are like yeah. the same character more or less. Yeah. You know. But I, I don't know. I just, in a lot of ways, I think I per, I prefer the un, the 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 true background of the Eternals. Yeah. To the New Gods. But, right. They yeah. they definitely feel a little more rooted, and that may be yeah. because now he had time to live with it. A he little had bit time longer, to live with so. it. It came afterwards so he could pick things that he liked and things that maybe didn't work as well. I'll also say I've read very little, though not zero. I actually recently, I don't know if I mentioned this in the What You've Been Reading, you know, I read some of the OG New Gods books mm-hmm. from Kirby. Nice. Um, and you know, for as old as they were, they mm-hmm. were definitely not the worst comics I've ever read. But mm-hmm. um, maybe he just, yeah, like you said, he kind of lived with them a little bit and decided these were some variations that mm-hmm. he wanted to make, some deviations, if you will. Torrance, do you have any questions for us? I not okay. I have one, but I cool. think that it will be pretty easy. Mm-hmm. Um, who plays Kingo? Uh, Kumail Nanjiani. Nanjiani. Yeah. You how said do you first, correct so. me how to say his name. Kumail Nanjiani. Nanjiani. Okay. Okay. Hey, uh, he nice. got jacked for this movie. Have you seen him? Yeah. Like. <laughs> He's done other stuff, but for this, he he like had a Chris Pratt transformation. Mm-hmm. Though the other okay. side, I think he was sm- like a smaller guy, and he's yeah. swole. Although I did saw or see one picture, it looked like he might have skipped leg day a couple times. <laughs> it didn't exactly match the top, but uh, you know what? I've skipped leg day once yeah. a bunch of times. Uh, anything else, fellas? No. Um, if you by the time you listen to this, if you've uh, if you've watched it. Uh, join the Discord. I'm not going to read it again, but yeah. link is on YouTube. Uh, scroll back to like the two minute mark or something where I rattle it off. Yeah, we'll uh, tr- we'll put it in the description anyway. Maybe you can copy and paste yeah. it from there. I mean, it's in the description. It's right. just you can't click on it everywhere. So right, everywhere. So, so hopefully, copy and paste or something. Yeah, 
And uh, if you have an iPhone and you're running the latest iOS, you can screenshot and then oh, literally yeah. copy and paste picture or text from photos now. Thank you, technology. Um, super cool. Makes it way easier to grab stuff that yep. you normally wouldn't be able to copy and paste from. So, but yeah, join the Discord. Tell us what you think of the new Eternals movie or the series. Uh, also, while you're there, let us know if you want to be a part of the Secret Santa. Yes. Also, it's polarizing. This film, yeah. early Rotten Tomatoes score from critics only, have this as the... Now, don't let this sway whether you go see it. Go see it. Don't let critics decide if movies are good for you. But it has the lowest Rotten Tomatoes rating of any MCU movie to date by a good amount. It's at a 53% right now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not bad but it's definitely like you know it's polarizing that's yeah. that's worse than thor dark world um i'm see i can't decide i won't i won't keep us much longer but because it's the critics you wouldn't think that they would give it a hard time for being like less less punch them shoot them up lasers and superheroes and maybe more grounded uh tackling heavier subjects than you know your typical marvel movie hmm. but it's critics also, you know, I can expect that from the audience score. Maybe like, where's Iron Man and why aren't explosions happening? But, um, Alex, I've, yeah, I've got something to tell you about Iron Man. What happened? He, he died in the MCU. <laughs> <laughs> so he's probably not going to be in this. Movie. Uh, I've discovered another <laughs> sound we need to have. It's the beep so that I can cuss freely <laughs> and you just hope you get it. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. a there's a scene on the IT crowd yeah. where they actually have one uh-huh. and this person just going off yeah. and then they pan over and there's a guy who's literally hitting the button <laughs> and then he they they cut back to him and he obviously misses it and the, the guy yeah. just drops an f bomb it's hilarious cool awesome I'm excited to see it I think it's I think I'm gonna like it we'll see there have been times where there have been far ends of the spectrum critics love it audience hate it and vice versa uh, I hope this is a time yeah. where I'm on the audience loving it. Yep. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to become an RT critic and criticize oh, the critics. Retweet. I was like, huh? no, Rotten okay. Tomatoes, yo. Uh, cool. So, That's been it. Uh, if you made it this far, then you like us. You really, really like us. <laughs> Please consider contributing to our Patreon, patreon.com slash two man comic book club with the number two. Yeah, some sweet tears up there. Until next time, we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. I should have hit that button sooner. That's all right. Uh, we can just uh, flirt with each other until the music's over. Or until past Alex yeah. starts giving the credits. Yeah. yeah. If you're listening right now, does the fact that we're talking over the end credit music bother you? Let us know in the comments. Let us know if you're not listening right now. Two Man Comic Book Club podcast is hosted by Alex Miller and Drew Morris. Our graphic and logo work is done by Tessa Price, and our original compositions and theme Still music fade composed to black by Drew right? Morris. FTB. You can hit that, yeah. Generic tag. And stopping.